Hello, everyone. My name is Oksana. It's Road to Edwards, weekly Edwards Insider, the 57. We deliver the news about the creation of our project Edwards. And as usual, Tokugawa-san, could you please open the session today? Okay. Uh, thank you, Oksana. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Hiro Tokugawa speaking. And uh, so it would be a part two of my discussion on uh, the daimyo, uh, the uh, feudal lords of Tokugawa, Japan. Uh, when the World Health Organization had a Japanese secretary general, uh, well, he had enemies, so they derided that. Uh, people thought that Japanese management would come in, and it turned out to be a daimyo. So, so, so more like a sultan, I would say. But uh, so he was very competent and controlled the organization well. So there were detractors. Uh, that was all. But anyway, so. Uh, for Japan, there are the shogun and then the daimyo. And many of the daimyo families remained uh, very rich even after the Meiji Restoration. So they were great, great sponsors in arts and, and art and culture. So in the uh, antique art market, daimyo still carries a lot of weight. And so formerly possessed by uh, this and that daimyo. Uh, but now, and then, um, as I explained, there are three categories of daimyo. So one was the shimpan, and these would be the uh, daimyos of the Tokugawa and Matsudaira family. And if you're from one of the uh, three Tokugawas, then uh, theoretically you had the right to inherit the shogunal throne or the shogunal seat. Uh, so actually, these were the greatest threats to the, uh, the shoguns. And then came the uh, fudai, which were all the uh, samurai who served uh, Tokugawa Ieyasu and their descendants. And uh, these were the daimyo, and they were very small, actually. Uh, the smallest daimyos were uh, of this category, and they were the ones who served as the ministers, the roju for the shogun. And then the third uh, were the tozama, and these are the very large daimyo. Uh, who had fought alongside Tokugawa Ieyasu in the Battle of Sekigahara. But the uh, two main opponents of the Battle of Sekigahara, uh, one is Mori of Choshu and the other is uh, Shimazu of Kagoshima or Satsuma, uh, they were very large daimyo as well. And the uh, so these you could say uh, were like the ma many of the Maharajas in uh, the uh, British Empire in India. You see, so they were semi sovereign. And uh, so, and then, and then now here, now I made some analysis last week, but here is a very important question. So, uh, the Fudai daimyo, who um, uh, most of whom became would become uh, shogunal ministers and uh, were moved from one fiefdom to another according to the convenience of the shogun. Now, why were they daimyo at all? Why was it necessary to make this uh, feudal setup? Because they were very loyal to the shogun, uh, not the shogun as a person, maybe, but to the uh, Tokugawa system as a whole. They were very dependable uh, underlings. So then why not make this one big Tokugawa monarchy in the middle of Japan uh, from, let's say, southern Tohoku all the way to, uh, well, Present day Aichi and Nagano, so central Japan, and but that was and, and it would not have been difficult at all. And you look carefully at the way the, daim, the these fudai daimyo were treated. Uh, it was actually closer to an absolutist monarchy in the middle of Tokyo, and then many smaller maharajas or uh, in semi independent principalities uh, closer towards the uh, two edges, the northern edge and uh, the western edge. Uh, so my explanation uh, is that the uh, shogun wanted to demonstrate to the uh, Tozama daimyo, who are not particularly close to uh, the Tokugawa shoguns uh, in terms of blood or relationship, that uh, we had no intention of conquering them. The shoguns wanted to show, to weaken himself so that the Tozama daimyo uh, could feel safer. So this is probably the best explanation. So things like this uh, were happening in medieval Europe as well. But uh, so otherwise the uh, Tokugawa system or the Tokugawa clan, uh, if you will, would be too strong. So which would have made it necessary for all the other, uh, the independent daimyo to prepare for an eventual, for an eventual attack and uh, annexation. And it didn't happen, and then the daimyo, were, the uh, Tozama daimyo, the independent daimyo, non-Tokugawa daimyo, were pretty sure from the beginning. Because uh, the shogun decided to make 
most of his uh, senior men into daimyo, therefore giving them uh, the same legal status as the independent Tozama daimyo, and thereby weakening the command structure of the uh, Tokugawa shogunate. And uh, and that was that I believe was the thinking behind this. So uh, the Tokugawa uh, made itself weaker so, so that peaceful coexistence would be promoted. So this, you could say, is one of the secrets of the uh, long Tokugawa peace. And I think that will be enough for this time. So uh, thank you and see you next week. Okay, so thank, you, thank you very much, Tokugawa-san. And uh, Martin, do you have some comments about your chapter of Daimyo series? Yes, it's very interesting that um, Tokugawa-san mentioned two kind of parallels with um, Europe, one, one like the Raj or the Maharajas, um, I, I think there were similarities between the way the British Empire was operated and the Roman Empire. And mm. it seems that this kind of limited sovereignty is a good model for, for maintaining mm. order. So, yes, it's very interesting that, you know, Japanese civilization um, arrived at a similar con con conclusion to, to medieval civilization. That's very interesting. Um, yeah, so um, that and, and, the, and the Raj, you know, so a, a similar kind of fiefdom situation but yeah very very interesting but yeah that's that's it for, for me just that uh, observation okay thank you very much and uh, Dominique could you please sum up everything we have a very small session today with a small company can you yeah. tell us about your trip to Paris because we oh, yes, please. Yes. yeah thank you yeah hi hi everybody I'm um, just um, I just want to report because that, yeah, today is a very important day, uh, just one day before that, the minting of uh, Otemon uh, NFT land sale and uh, Katana NFTs. And the tomorrow and the, other, the day after tomorrow. So in this case, uh, in this uh, uh, weekly insiders, it's just up and road. Um, probably uh, that's the day that the minting. This is very important. And uh, please just... Uh, uh, just that is the last chance for the Otemon probably. Um, please just yeah register the white list and then that uh, the buy the NFT land and the, the 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 price. The those daimyo uh mansions uh district the, the first that that was daimyo kochi and the next is the Otemons and and then the third cell would be a uh, sakura Adamons. So those three sessions the, the, the north east and then south. Uh, just part of uh, uh, the Edo castles. So now uh, creation uh, team actually now creating the uh, creating the Edo castle first, and then Daimyo Koji, and then Otemons, and then just Edo is just developing just toward the east, the east that did the, at the first stage, um, and that'll be um, just uh, very uh, exciting for me because. Um, it's going to be Nihonbashi, very near futures, maybe next year, and uh, Ginza's also. And, and then uh, the Saka Stadium in Tsukiji's, and also uh, Ryogoku in uh, uh, just as a, uh, the Sumo Arena. Um, at, at the same time, uh, in uh, Nihonbashi, just, uh, we just found that just next to Nihonbashi was Yoshiwara was there at the first stage first period of Edo, Edo period. So um, the next to Nihonbashi, we're going to have a, a Yoshiwaras. And we might see that uh, 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 Oiran parade uh, uh, in the future. So uh, we, we might have uh, some very exciting game in the future. But in the gamification team is actually really considering uh, 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 the, the contents of uh, Edobus at the first, because uh, this gonna, uh, Edobus is going to have a really long-term project. And, and then... At the first stage of the, uh, the game gamification would be the very simple one, uh, and then uh, in future that uh, we're, we're going to have a very sort of more higher end, uh, uh, more actually the, the, the professional gamers actually can play just with that. But it, it takes a little more time just to 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 realize. So um, we will see that uh, uh, more sort of simple game in the metaverse, and then we have uh, some tokenomics, and then you can just earn the tokens and then spend the tokens, and then we, we will see that a lot of events anyway. And then uh, we are now, uh, uh, the apart from the land sale and also the tomorrow's minting, um, we are actually now accelerating the marketing, and you know, we see uh, just uh, to just uh, 
seen many people, the investors just to the overseas. And I just met the, the Paris. I met the, the people in Paris. Uh, and also uh, uh, just we will see that in many places in the future that are to invest uh, in Edubas, uh, uh in futures. But um, yeah, that was that was very, very hard work just in the one night stay, just uh, just in Paris and then just in have a meeting. And yeah, sometimes that, yeah, it's, it's, it's very exciting, but sometimes it's not. So, <laughs> uh, um, yeah, um, we just, yeah, expanding operation on a global uh, basis. Uh, we, we, we were just, yeah, going overseas a lot just to have a, uh, the, the many, many Airbus fund in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dominique, and uh, thank you everybody for listening today. We will meet next week. Goodbye.